Okay, with the new Fluid Engine in Squarespace, I thought we'd have a play around with some images in page layouts, and we're gonna start off with a brand new template. So I'm gonna jump on to one of these templates. Might go with this one. I don't think I've used this one at all before. So I'll start with Fandom. Okay, once we've loaded the new site, we can just flip through this. If you're new to Squarespace, the good news is the free trial doesn't require you to add your card details. I'll often get rid of this message at the bottom here as well. We're going to add a new page. So go to Pages, click on this plus icon, click Blank Page. And if you are new to Squarespace, I've created a load of tutorials in getting started with Squarespace as well. And that would probably be a better place to start than here. I'm not going to worry about naming the page. And I'm going to click on Edit with this blank page here. First up, we're going to add a section. And we can see instantly that we've got all of these options for hero units or banners or intros as Squarespace calls it from the start. What we're going to do is add this section here and show how we can use overlapping images or other image effects now in the new Squarespace Fluid Engine. Okay, so we can see we've got the text card on the left and we've got the image to the right. This is going to be really popular. If I edit this layout, and I'm going to change it to a dark color. Might go for a light actually. I'll add a darker section below. So we can see now when we edit the section, we can see these grid blocks behind. These are where your content will snap to. So again, if we go and select this text, we can see it's, it's working like that as well. If we wanted to put an image in here, I'm not saying it's the best approach, but it is achievable now where it wasn't previously. So say for example, we wanted to take this image over more to the right, and we wanted to add a long thin banner to the left of it. This is now much easier to do. So I can add a block, add an image, then I can move that empty image block into position to start with. So one thing we can notice is it will always keep those gutters in place. So I can't just move it aligned like that. So I can on desktop publishing software like, like Canva, for example. But what I can do as a little cheat is overlap it. And we can see here we've got the option to reorder them. So if I've overlapped it and I wanted a thinner section here, we can just move it behind the other image. Okay, you may even decide that you'd want a colored block or something very simple there. But what we're gonna do now is browse for free stock images from Unsplash. You may have noticed that there's a new feature to upload images from your mobile, which is gonna be very handy indeed. We've got this section here. So what I might do is look for like a crop on a field or something like that, just to blend in with this style here. So I might go with this. We can see the colors are quite consistent up into this point, And this is where I'm probably going to crop it just to have that field in place alongside this well-worn stock image by Squarespace. Okay, usually with Unsplash, the resolution of the images are high enough, so the image size is big enough to get away with this, but we'll have a look now. I'm going to edit the image, and I'm going to go into the image editor and really manipulate this image using the crop tool. And I'm going to choose custom. I'm now going to crop down to the rough area that I want to choose. 
and we can see now that we've got a nice consistent texture for that section. We can see there's a gap either side, and that's mainly because the image, it's fitting to the frame top and bottom, but it's not filling the frame. So if I choose fill, we can now see that the image has filled that frame. And I can choose to resize that image and then move it over further again, just so I get a thinner strip for that image. Really nice effect. Now what I could choose to do would be to split these which is what we'll do in the next step, is to split the same image multiple times and see if we can get a, a split image effect on there. But what I'm going to do now is choose the image that we've used here to replace this one. So now I've already chosen the image, I can select it from my library. And as we can see, our cropped and zoomed, and now we've got the original alongside it. I've got a couple of options. I can either go back into the image editor and crop the image, or I can move the focal point. Because this is quite a wide aspect ratio, I think it's anamorphic widescreen, wider than 16 by nine. That means that we're gonna have a lot of the image not being seen. So if you want to make sure that you're reducing the load time of your Squarespace page, switching it to a four by three, could be a better option. As long as this is slightly wider than the frame that we're dropping it into, this is almost square here. We're going to be fine. Okay, so now we've got something quite consistent between these two sections. I'm going to press save. And a unique layout that would be much harder to do on the old Squarespace engine. Okay, so the one thing I could do now is actually look at this on mobile. And this is where I could add custom code in. I'll try and dig it out for you just to hide this block on mobile view. So if we edit on mobile view, If we delete it from mobile, then switch back to desktop, we can see it's gone on desktop. So we're going to undo all of those changes and go back to the previous version. So there is no option to via Squarespace at the moment anyway, to remove that image from mobile, even though it's a little bit jarring there. But I will try and dig out. In fact, I'll probably create another little tutorial on how we can hide elements in mobile. It's really not that difficult. Okay, I'm going to add in another intro section below. I think I'm going to go with this one here. I'm going to get rid of that title. I'm going to go into the section settings. I'm going to reduce the height of the image. And using this option here, which seems to be hidden behind, just going to reduce the height of the entire section. If I move the text up a little bit, align it to the left just to get a nice consistency with the section above. And I think I might just copy and paste that. Just give the impression of more text in there, which is a better balance for what we're looking for. Finally, I'm going to create a heading for the top section. I don't need to highlight all of it. I can just click on there and choose maybe a heading three. Perfect. In fact, I think I can get rid of that last sentence just to balance it out more. 
and move that up a block. OK. You may notice that we've got a lot more spacing above and below that top section. Now this is where we always have a trade-off as designers. We're looking for consistency between each section. Consistency is key. But we also want to make sure that we've got plenty to work with as well. So what I'm going to do first is add our three image blocks in place. So there'll be two this size and then one larger to the right. So I've adjusted that image. Then I'm going to add the next two image blocks. And you probably can see where I'm going with this now. So we can see that's is that, that's too narrow, as we can see here. So just by eye, we can just increase the width of it. And I'm going to add one more image block as well. This time, this image block is going to go right to the edge of the screen. So it's similar to the one above, but instead of splitting into two, we're going to split this into three. But the difference here is it'll be one continuous image throughout as opposed to a zoom section, as in this example. I think I'm going to add another section above. Just put this text area in, just to split the two sections so that we can see them slightly more balanced in the page. And I'm going to go with a dark color in this middle section here. So we can see our header option one and the option two here. Now we're going to replace this image with the same one we used before. Again, it's in the library, so we can just select it once. If I wanted to get this loading really quickly, I would, of course, crop it each time, but for speed, I'm going to just move the focal point in this case. OK, so we can see this isn't quite working as intended yet. So this is where we double click on the image. I'm going to move the focal point right over to the left on the first one. Then right over to the right on the last one. And then just a little bit to the left on this middle one to get rid of that combine harvester. And so if we have a look at these lines here, it's not perfect. I think this one needs to go over a little bit more. I think the lines are a little bit better fitting there now. So there we go. One continuous image with some nice gaps between each one. And we've got two quite unique effects using the new Fluid Engine in Squarespace. Hope you've enjoyed. Please share your own examples in the comments. Cheers.